Hello everybody, and thank you so much for coming out today. My name is Sophie, and I'm a third year at UC San Diego and the state board chair for CalPERC students. <laughs> CalPERC students is a statewide, student-funded, and student-run advocacy organization on eight UC campuses. For the past 45 years, we've worked to create a greener, healthier, and more meaningful future. We believe that students shouldn't have to wait until after graduation to make a difference on issues that they care about, so we organize locally and statewide to win real victories to protect the environment and public health, promote civic engagement, alleviate poverty, and make college more affordable. We were the group that helped to pass Prop 67 to ban plastic grocery bags and protect our oceans. And we were a major force in helping to pass SB 100 for 100% clean electricity. We are here today to continue the fight against climate change. Climate change is one of the most pressing issues of our generation. Every year, we face new record-breaking wildfires, dangerous flooding, and devastating droughts. As young people, this is our future to protect. I'll be 52 in 2050. We have to act fast to stop the worst impacts of climate change, and that means transitioning away from a dirty energy economy and toward a clean energy future. And with the passage of SB 100, we see our state leading the way in the fight against climate change, but 40% of our carbon emissions come from transportation. So the next step is getting all of our transportation to run on clean energy. We are so, <laughs> we are so excited to be here today, back in Sacramento once more, to fight for bills to stave off the worst impacts of climate change. And we have a list of bills that we're supporting, but we're also here to say this is not enough. We have to stop drilling for oil in California. We have to get all of our transportation to run on clean energy by 2030. And we have to rebuild our cities and buildings to produce energy and keep us clean and safe. Thank you so much to all of the elected officials who are joining us here today. And Assembly Member Todd Gloria and Senator Stern, we are so excited about this resolution that you have drafted. But again, we need more and we need it now. I would first like to introduce Senator Stern to talk about the visionary resolution he has drafted for a cleaner future for all of us. Well, thank you, uh, Sophie, and thank you, Calperg, for showing up. Um, it's your job to lead us here. Uh, the next generation has to inherit this earth. And whether you see it on the Hill or you see it here in the California Capitol, you know, young people are leading the climate movement now uh, because they have to. And it's no disrespect or offense to uh, older voters or those who may not be here to, to see 2050. Uh, but the fact is we have to live in California, hopefully the rest of our lives, and hopefully in a way that doesn't burn out in our homes, it doesn't make our kids sick, allows us to get to work without losing our minds in traffic, allows us to get through our daily lives without sending it all overseas to foreign oil companies, um, and allows us just to, to continue in our existence in a way that um, is sustainable, but is also more convenient and more affordable. Uh, they'll tell you that we can't afford to take these steps to a carbon neutral California or to a 100% clean energy fueled grid or to a transportation fleet that's zero emission. We can't afford not to make those changes. That's why we're running this resolution. And so we don't want to just be all talk here today. We want to put dollars on the table. And the fact is that California is the fifth largest economy in the world, and we can move markets. So regardless of what Washington is doing, uh, sort of fighting amongst themselves or stuck at an impasse, you know, California is moving forward, and we're going to put real cash on the table here to give that, that challenge to the private sector to say, can you step up? If we've got $100 billion to spend as a state that is aligned with greenhouse gas emissions reductions between now and 2030, that's, that's more capital than most nations on this planet can bring to bear. 
So we're asking the private sector to say, what's your match? How can you step up and meet us here? And mind you, this is without any new taxes. This is about more smartly aligning our state transportation dollars, our greenhouse gas reduction fund, utility programs, bond programs, other, other pots of funding that we think can actually bring the full might of California to bear, to move markets in a benevolent direction, and to really realize a, a cleaner, more affordable future for California. I'm so honored to be here with my colleagues from the Assembly and the Senate, uh, the Assembly member from San Diego, uh, Todd Gloria, and the Assembly member from, from uh, LA, right in the heart of Los Angeles, Wendy Carrillo, have stepped up as champions over in the Assembly. But I'm honored mostly to have one of the great leaders of climate policy in California for decades. I don't want to date her, but she has been doing this since before I was born. And I, the fact that, the fact that she, the fact, the fact that she still looks this good, and is and is this and and is this persistent about sticking with this movement? I'm telling you, it is a testament to endurance. But we're tired of waiting. So Nancy Skinner, come take the mic and let's bring this home. Thank you, Senator Stern. Thank my colleagues, Assemblymember Carrillo, Assemblymember Garcia. I mean, excuse, sorry, Gloria. Gloria. Blank. Of course, I'm thinking about Assemblymember Garcia and his role also in continuing some of our market-based programs. But mostly, I want to thank our students. And as someone, I'll date myself, and as a person who in the 70s as a student at Cal was one of the founders and organizers, uh, organizers of the CalPerg chapter at UC Berkeley, Go Bears, yeah. I am so happy to see the, the challenge that they are bringing to us and demanding that we respond to, which is absolutely essential. As Senator Stern pointed out, and as our student speaker pointed out, we are in an absolute crisis. The climate crisis is real, undeniable, and we have a 12-year window to act in a responsible way so that we can look our children and our grandchildren in the eye and so that we can do the least damage to every being on this planet, human, animal, plant, or otherwise. And it's incumbent upon us to do it. And what I so honor about what the students brought to us and what Senator Stern crafted in that resolution is it reflects the kind of commitment that this crisis deserves, a commitment that accelerates California's Green Deal. And we have a Green Deal. We initiated that Green Deal good while ago with AB 32, SB 32, SB 100. But what we are doing now is saying it's a good Green Deal, but it needs to be even stronger and accelerated and implemented within that window that science is telling us is a must. And if we do so, then we can show to the world and we can show to the ridiculous deniers in Washington, D.C. that this is doable, achievable, economically wise, and absolutely essential. So I am very glad to be joining in this, and I know that California can do it, and I so thank the students for their leadership. Thank you. One more time for Senator Skinner, everybody. Uh, good morning. My name is Todd Gloria. I have the great honor of representing the 78th Assembly District of the State of California, coastal San Diego County, a place that is distinguished by its natural resources and clearly on the front lines of climate change. Uh, I want to give a shout out to our CalPerg students who are here. But give it up. In particular to my students from UC San Diego. Where are you guys at? 
These young people are amazing. We just had an opportunity to sit down in my office and talk about not just uh, the, our, our excitement at the adoption of Senate Bill 100 last year, committing California to move to 100% clean energy, but really a commitment to actually implement that particular piece of legislation, not to just adopt lofty goals, but actually make them real, because that's how we will stop the worst of climate change. You know, time and time again, the activism and organizing of students like these CalPERC students have been what has moved our country forward. And speaking with you all today gives me the inspiration to keep persisting in supporting legislation like Senator Stern's resolution, uh, like Assemblymember Garcia's uh, good work on his committee, like my great colleague, Wendy Carrillo, uh, all of us working together to do what we can on climate change. We know that the evidence is absolutely clear. The true emergency facing our state, our nation, and our world is climate change, and don't let anyone tell you anything different. Climate change will lead to more heat-related deaths, smaller crop yields, more people in poverty, and slowing economic growth. It's the world's most vulnerable communities that will be hit first and worst because of its impacts. This is the real emergency. Like many of you, I have been inspired and encouraged by the incredible activism and the creative problem solving presented in the Green New Deal. The Green New Deal recognizes that it's not the first time that our country has faced an existential threat. The difference is in the past, we have stepped up and made, not acknowledged it, but tackled it, and we did it successfully. This is what we mean about climate change. A Green New Deal says that we're not going to just acknowledge the science or debate it, but we're going to engage it and we're going to defeat it, just as we've done with fascism, just as we've done with all kinds of other threats to our country. We have done it before. We can do it again. And like in those instances, I know it's the young people that are going to lead the way. So I'm glad you guys are involved in this. So this is what it's about, everybody. This is about mobilizing on a national scale all of our resources, all of our people, all of our scientists, all of our researchers, and yes, all of our power, both economic and otherwise, to head off this very threat. We will bring the same bold action, courage, and energy that has proactively addressed climate change, and that's why I'm proud to be the author of Assembly Joint Resolution Number 7. This resolution will push Congress to take a climate emergency seriously and take up legislation known as the Green New Deal. When members of Congress convene in Washington, it'll be clear where California stands. We stand on the right side of history. We stand opposed to climate change. We stand up for science, and we stand out for making sure that we continue to have a planet that we may live on. So. For those who are opposed to this, often what I hear is that not, they're no longer debating the science because the science is abundantly clear. They certainly don't want to stand with the people like our president who suggests otherwise because he's kind of hard to stand in public with. They stand here often because it's hard. We know this is going to be hard. We acknowledge that it'll be hard. But what is harder is a collapsing economy due to climate change. What is harder is having your home burned up in a wildfire because we didn't do enough to stop the spread of climate change. What is hard is living with asthma in communities like Barrio Logan in San Diego because we haven't done enough to transfer our transportation system to clean energy. What is hard is continually once again dealing with environmental justice concerns that hit too many parts of our, of our state and not doing enough about it. What is hard is inaction. What is right is action. I stand on the side of action. I thank you all so much for being here today. And someone who I know is a fighter and someone who always takes action is my friend, my former seatmate. I miss her every day on the floor of the assembly because we used to sit together. Now we sit apart, but I know that she's holding it down on the left side of the floor while I'm holding it down on the right side. Would you put your hands together for Wendy Carrillo, everybody? Hey. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Buenos dias. It's, a, it's an honor to be with you all here today. My name is Wendy Carrillo, and I represent Assembly District 51, which includes East Los Angeles and Northeast LA, including the communities surrounding downtown Los Angeles. And I share that because it's important for you to understand what my district look like, looks like. It is surrounded by freeways, the 2, the 5, the 10, the 60, the 101, the 134, and the 710. It is a community that has been a victim of pollution for far too long. It's hard to breathe. There's not enough fresh air, there's not enough trees. My younger sister suffered from asthma and we nearly lost her when she was about 10. This is not a unique story, it is a story of many across my district, across California, and across the United States. 
there is a moment in time when we say enough is enough, and this is this moment. And I'm so thankful for young people, for students who are here, who have been in this fight, and who continue the fight. There's a lot of talk about what's happening in DC. There's talk that we uh, live in modern society where we take airplanes. I took an airplane getting to work here today from Los Angeles. I drive a car, I take public transit, I take the train. This doesn't mean that I don't care about what the future looks like. This doesn't mean that I can't do something now for future generations to come. In fact, I want to invite energy companies to come to the table and help us figure out a solution. Because this is the momentum in which we are living in now. And we know that industries aren't, to going, aren't going to go away. But what we have is an opportunity to work together to do what's right for California, to do what's right for the country, and to set a tone for the entire world that we are in a time that we need to act, and we need to act now. And that is the urgency of this moment. I came to office because I spent two and a half months at Standing Rock, North Dakota in the fight for clean water. And I realized that what was happening there is happening across the world. And I wanted to do something more than just tell the story as a journalist. I wanted to be a part of policy that affected people's lives, that impacted the state that I grew up in and that I live and the country that I love. So to the representatives in DC, know that California has your back. And we're gonna do everything we possibly can to make sure that the Green New Deal starts here and is implemented across the nation. Because we have already started. California is already leading in so many ways with SB 100 and my colleagues who have championed so much in the decades before I got here. But we can definitely do so much more. And as indigenous people and as native people have taught us, we have to work towards the next seven generations to come. And it starts with us, and it starts now, and I'm so honored to be with you uh, to share some of that, those ideals and know that we are working towards reducing carbon emissions. In my office, it's a priority, and I hope that I can count on you because this fight's gonna be big, and it's not gonna go away, but together, we can make a difference. Voy a hacer unas palabras en, en español. Yo soy Wendy Carrillo, represento el este de Los Ángeles y las comunidades alrededor del centro de Los Ángeles. Comunidades que tienen freeways a través de todo nuestro uh, distrito. El 2, el 5, el 10, el 60, el 101, el 110, 134 y el 710. Es un distrito que por varias décadas ya ha sido víctima del de el tipo del aire que causa asma. Mi hermanita, cuando tenía aproximadamente 10 años, casi la perdimos porque sus ataques de asma eran tan severos que tuvo que ser hospitalizada. Esta no es una historia única, desafortunadamente es una historia muy común que pasa en comunidades de bajos recursos, comunidades inmigrantes, porque el, el tema del clima es un tema de justicia. Es un tema que ahora tenemos que tener la valentía de poder hacer algo. Dicen muchos que vivimos en una sociedad moderna. Yo tomé un, un avión para llegar aquí. Manejo un carro, tomo el tren. De vez en cuando uso el autobús. Eso no quiere decir que no quiero hacer algo para el futuro de nuestras generaciones. Necesitamos todos juntos trabajar para hacer algo positivo para el Estado, para la, la nación y para el mundo. Y quiero uh, reconocer e invitar a las compañías de energía que vengan a la mesa con nosotros y nos ayuden a encontrar la solución que necesitamos. No es necesario que estemos en, en un pleito, digamos, sobre el futuro. Ya sabemos qué es lo que el futuro trae. Ahora tenemos una oportunidad de trabajar juntos para poder salir adelante para hacer algo positivo para las generaciones que vienen detrás de nosotros y para poder avanzar una póliza que va a ayudar al estado de California, al país y al mundo. Muchas gracias por estar aquí. Now I'd like to take this time to invite uh, our, our student, um, Miguel, Ramirez. Miguel Ramirez from UC Riverside to share a few words. Muchas gracias a todos. 
por venir. Mi nombre es Miguel Ramírez y estoy un estudiante en la Universidad de California en Riverside. Um, como ha sido mencionado ya, um, estamos viviendo en un presente donde los impactos del cambio climático son muy evidentes uh, en forma de incendios, uh, inundaciones y sequías en nuestro estado. Uh, y es ahora más urgente que nunca que nuestros legisladores del, del estado de California uh, se levanten las mangas uh, para empezar a imaginar un nuevo futuro sin, sin, um, sin, uh, con, energía, con energía renovable. Um, y quiero agradecer a los legisladores que vinieron hoy uh, para ser los campeones en la pelea contra el cambio de clima. Uh, necesit los necesitamos ahora más que nunca. Y estamos aquí detrás de ellos para apoyar y ayudar. Uh, y vamos a hacer todo lo que sea necesario para garantizar que las computadoras que usamos, los edificios en los que trabajamos y vivimos y los automóviles que manejamos uh, sean alimentados con energías renova renovables. Y ahora quiero oficialmente empezar nuestra uh, Student Lobby Day. Um, es hora de entrar al Capitolio y hablar con nuestros representantes uh, y seguir empujando para un futuro más limpio para nuestra generación y las generaciones que vienen. Um, thank you all very much. My name is Miguel Ramirez. I'm a student at UC Riverside. Um, as, as has been noted earlier, uh, we are now living in a year, where, in a place where we have year-round impacts of climate change in the form of fires, droughts, and floods, right? Um, it's more urgent now than ever that our legislators here in California roll up their sleeves and um, figure out how our economy can thrive without uh, fossil fuels. I want to thank our legislators here today um, for being champions in the fight to tackle climate change. Um, we need you, and we need you now more than ever, and we're behind you, and we're gonna be uh, here uh, ready to help. Uh, we'll do whatever it takes to guarantee that the computers we use, the buildings we live and work in, and the cars that we use to get to the places we need to go are powered by renewable energy. Um, now, I want to officially kick off our student lobby day. Um, it's time to go into the Capitol, sit down with our elected officials, and continue to push uh, for a more livable future for our generation and generations to come. Thank you very much.